in that room even if I was with someone else I just did not feel right in that bedroom Back in 1998, I was living in an apartment with my mother and my single parents and um, eight, well, yeah, eight siblings. And I was about eight years old when these um, encounters started happening. Um, I could actually count on hand how many things have actually began to happen. Um, we lived in a kind of like a quiet neighborhood. Right in Massachusetts, kind of like sort of on the edge of Boston, sort of, and um, we we moved from Mattapan, Massachusetts, to Brighton. Mattapan at the time was a hot city, like a lot, like a hot part of Boston, Massachusetts. There was a lot of stuff happening, um, lots of random people getting shot watched a store get burned down from across my old house on River Street, Massachusetts, and River Street, Mattapan. So I was probably like maybe six or seven when I saw this happen. A few years into when I originally moved from Miami, Florida to Boston, Massachusetts, um, left for other reasons. So um, it was around, it was around October, kind of sort of like in the cold, the beginning of winter months when this started happening. Me and my my other sister Fabian, we were sharing rooms at the time. I was eight years old. She was probably like, yeah, she was in her last year of high school, I believe. Because I remember clearly the next year after that, I remember saying, oh, I want to go to the same school as my oldest, my sister went when she went to college. She went to business school, and I was still in elementary at the time. We have a huge family, so. Everyone is kind of like, oh, I want to do this, I want to do that. My brother is, was, my brother was in the army at the time, um, and I was just a kid observing everything happening. So one night I decided to go to bed, and actually I was trying to fall asleep. I was, ha I, I had issues falling asleep. So um, I went to bed around maybe like before 10 o'clock. We had a bedtime curfew. Me and my youngest sister, she was two years younger than me, and so we were basically like, the two girls get to go to bed early. So I went to sleep early, and I was sharing the same room with my sister Fabian. Um, as sisters, she kind of liked to play pranks on people, and I was not a very a big fan of being scared half out of my body, like seriously badly scared, and they all thought it was funny. so. Aside from that, I began to drift off into sleep and, you know, it was one of those nights where I finally felt comfortable trying to fall asleep. And then, uh, I started hearing what I thought was whispering. Fabian was not in her bed. She was in the bathroom and the door was shut closed to the bathroom. So she was taking care of her business. Everybody else was in bed and I was up awake trying to fall asleep and I just really couldn't. We were just getting used to the apartment that we moved to. To me at the time the house was humongous. Five bedrooms and two bathrooms and a really large kitchen. So to me that was like a huge mansion house. And so I was like really fascinated by that. But every time it was became the night hours, it was the worst time of the night for me. I could not sleep. I hated sleeping at in that room. Even if I was with someone else, I just did not feel right in that bedroom. It was just that bedroom 
and uh, the second bathroom. I did not feel comfortable in there ever. So I go to lay down and I try to fall asleep and I hear what sounded like something whispering my name. It was very clear and also you know I am hearing impaired so I only have hearing in my left ear and um, also partially blind so blindness in my right eye mm, yeah oh my goodness blindness in my right eye and deafness in my right ear so I'm very sure of what I heard and it sounded like it was coming out of the closet let me tell you I bolted out of that freaking room so quick I don't remember my feet touching the ground I ran to my mother's room and she basically told me oh it's just you're not used to the house um, maybe you're just hearing things and she just brought me back to my room tucked me back in my bed and Fabian as a sister who kind of was kind of mean to me at the time just just sisterly things well, we're kind of mean to each other we played pranks and this was not no prank nobody wanted to stay awake because we were all excited oh we got a new house we're so happy um, and I was really shattered I was shaken by what I heard and it started again so I turned around and I fell asleep I slept on my left ear and I left my deaf side up and I don't know what was going on I just could not sleep and she I heard the whispering again so this time I forced myself to sleep this had been going on from when I was eight years old until I was 12 or 13 I believe it happened it ended when I was 13 which was probably like the last year of middle school for me I'm sure it was So I went to counseling because when you're when you get counseling services, you get it's part of an uh, it's part of an IEP plan for students with special needs at the time. And um, I was basically in special needs because of my impairments, which are permanent. So in that in that case, I um, went to counseling and I told the counselor about my issues with being able to sleep every single freaking night ever since I moved into that apartment with my siblings and my mom um, everyone thought I was crazy all oh, that yeah you're just you're just hearing things oh something's wrong with your brain so I went through rigorous CT scans just to see if I wasn't developing any mental illnesses all the CT scans came back clean not a single issue all that was wrong with my brain was the fact that there was some damages to my occipital lobe and my auditory, my hearing functions just clearly was not working fine. And because of, you know, hearing loss, it's permanent deafness in my right ear and permanent blindness in my right eye. So um, that was all that was visible in the CT scans. There was nothing with uh, schizophrenia, no ADHD. I was going through rigorous tests on and on and on for those couple of years. So until my mother was sitting at home alone and she heard what sounded like heels going down the side, the, the, the hallway in the five bedroom apartment. So she didn't really, she didn't get too scared because she's from the islands. My mother was from Puerto Rico, Haiti, so she tells me that there was a lot of stuff happening where she used to live and what I experienced was nothing compared to what she experienced when she was a kid growing up in Haiti. Um, so for me, I wasn't born in Haiti. I was born in Miami, Florida, so that scared me out of my skin. Um, I'm not used to that kind of stuff and I don't think I ever want to be used to any of that scary crap that's been going on so um, I talked to the counselor and he talked to my mother 
and he recommended some hearing tests to see if any if I was having some more hearing loss. Um, all, all the hearing tests came back pretty normal. No hearing in my right ear and some functional hearing in my left ear. I might not speak like I have a hearing impairment because I also went through rigorous speech therapy to be able to pronounce my R's correctly and also transitioning from kind of sort of going from sign language to standard English and also learning Braille to reading standard English with enhanced fonts. So basically I'm able to function like everybody else but with minor enhancements which should not affect anything clearly. Um, so rigorous tests started all over again. CT scans, brain scans, hearing tests, vision tests. My mother had all of that stopped because now she began to believe me years later after all the scary crap happened. Um, she heard footsteps going down the hall, heels. We didn't have neighbors. No one lived on the top floor or the bottom floor or the floor across from us. We were the only ones there in that big development. That apartment that we used to live in was abandoned for 15 years before we finally moved in. Um, so I'm assuming from the eerie sensation that I got when I came into that house for the first time that something happened. But I was too young to understand that like, maybe someone must have died or something happened there, which is why it was abandoned for that amount of time. I didn't question it. We were just glad that we were able to move from Mattapan and come to Brighton. Um, in that sense, I then learned over the years that I had, or probably still have, what is known as an ESP, extrasensory perception, which is when, well, it's kind of like a replacement for when you're, when you've lost something, like, I don't know, your senses were altered, like, fast. I was scared out of my skin. Um, till this day, I never forgot what happened, because after I started in, um, experiencing these things, um, my brothers and sisters started encountering things as well. So what my mother did in order to get rid of these issues, she did what was called a cleansing, where you pass like a, you have like a, some type of incense and you walk around each and every single room and you kind of like a, a spiritual cleansing. It just washes out what was in the house before you came in there. And even then, as, as a kid growing up, I still felt like there was something there in that one particular room that me and Fabian shared. Um, I didn't really stay, I didn't stay in that room for too long. I ended up sleeping in a room next to my mother because I was terrified. In fact, I was terrified of staying in any part of that house alone, period. So um, yeah, pretty much we cleansed the house free of whatever was wrong, as they say. As a person with the extra sensory perception, I still feel like there was something there. It just wasn't going to go away. Um, I then grew up and learned that my grandmother was the exact same way I was.